This is a really special uh, Icon Derelict project I want to share with you. We found this car back in Pennsylvania last on the road in 1958. And uh, really incredible condition, especially given it was in Pennsylvania, but I think it helps that it was in a concrete garage. So there's the center dash, which posted a nice opportunity, albeit quite a challenge to integrate modern touchscreen audio, nav, Bluetooth, yada, 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 into that stock assembly. So that was kind of a brain drain. Here's some of the materials we were putting together for the client. Here's to the engine prefit. This is the ZR1 as used in the, like the CTSV Cadillac. We had to do a fair bit of engineering with some help from GM to figure out a way to visually integrate this motor in this vintage vehicle. So we CNC'd these insert plates that added onto the top cover, and then we worked to paint to patina those. And the idea was to take the fireball font and vintage Buick graphic and uh, kind of create more synergy between that state-of-the-art motor and the not-so-state-of-the-art body. Um, but it was good, clean fun, and it came out really nice. Another challenge with this vehicle was the seating. Uh, the client wanted a center console, and it was a split articulating bench seat, which did not have such provisions originally. So we hand-built the console with some cool brass hardware and a vintage tong, and then had to reconstruct the seats and seat back support structures to uh, accommodate it. Sounds pretty simple, but literally it was about a 100-hour endeavor. For the upholstery pattern, we used the Roadmaster sort of quilted look, but instead of a stitch line, uh, we did a French double stitch on the outboard, but for the pleating, uh, we did it with heat indentations. Instead of using fabric rods, we wove the uh, leather, and here's the interior all in bits and pieces. Another fun engineering challenge were the wheels. So we really dug the original hubcaps. So we had spun stainless hubcaps made and then acid etched them with the font. Then we CNC'd these wheels custom, powder coated them, and then patinaed the Buick font and voila, ZR rated rim and tire combo that still looks like it's from the 40s, tricky, tricky. The body was quite nice. So we had to do one very small section of the floor. Fuel system was all engineered in CAD and built in stainless from our friends at Vaporworks, Too Much Fabrication, and Rock Valley Customs. Here you'll see the pre-phase, pre-build assembly. So this is when we finished all the CAD work, but then we literally physically assemble the vehicle without fluids or finish coatings to make sure everything's getting along together in reality. That's the one patch panel we had to make for the floor. So here we are coming together now. Um, Dynamac coating, dash is figured out. Here you see us pre-fitting the removable roll cage for track day. And uh, this is pretty much final prep assembly where we know everything's gonna work out and everything's plumbed and tested. Hydraulic windows converted to electric, the dash reconfigured, the underside engineering all figured out and hunky-dory. And you know, things like that fuel system, uh, there's a lot of thought that goes into that. So we have to run internal baffles. We also run a rollover valve. Uh, we run uh, even a factory sealed cap. And then all systems are plumbed in stainless steel. Uh, all heat blanket factoring is done. Exhaust, mandrel bent, TIG welded stainless. There's the fuel evaporative vent valve from our buddies at Too Much. Then tear it all apart again, and voila. Wow, this video makes it look simple. So here it is, uh, everything now, uh, mil-spec one or greater powder coated, PVD, physical vapor deposition coated, ceramic coated, polished, um, I don't think painted anywhere. Everything's uh, pretty techy on the finishes, paint kind of sucks. So basically here you see the chassis in its final uh, dress. You can tell there's little wax marks on uh, all the attaching hardware, which tells us it's been through final torque check the final QC. So as this chassis is assembled and done and torqued and wax marked and everything's ready to rock except fluids, and while we're doing that uh, there's a basically a rolling rotisserie that we build for the body structures. So again with the derelicts the idea is to make it look like we did nothing but we did far from nothing. Uh, the patina on this derelict, as with all of them, is honest. Um, we are learning the art of faux patina, but we're using that 
with restraint, generally just on uh, integration of modern components such as steering column or you know that engine cover and stuff like that. But um, the body's put on a rotisserie. All the hinges are rebuilt with impregnated brass bushings, uh, stainless shanks. All the glass is replaced. All the weather stripping. The underside of all body panels is coated in heat cured polyurea. And then the inside is coated in POR15, then Dynamat tack strips, then polyurea, then more Dynamat, then insulation, and on and on and on. As always, you see here, we're running the BF Goodrich tires. We love BFG, especially these G-Force tires. There's the ceramic coating on the exhaust. We're running uh, MagnaFlow stainless baffled mufflers. Here's the body on the cart coming back from polyurea. Here's a couple shots showing the detail work of that polyurea on the underside of the body. And now finally we can start final assembly. So body back on chassis after being pre-built, all electrical converted to light emitting diodes with the exception of the headlights for which we use the halogen H4 uh, by Hella. There you see the modern I did it tilt GM style column patina de flow with a custom hub machined to allow the original steering wheel to fit and then custom shift lever. Here's that center IP done. Ta-da! So then that articulates down on gas shocks and then gives you access to all the technology that you wanted but without jumping the shark visually. All the switch gear is also converted to modern reliable switches. The clock is now a modern quartz VDO. This uh, compass doesn't work, but it just looked too cool and hit a horrible hole in the dash that we didn't know what else to do with, so my client scored that on eBay. It's funny, with this car, you're always going north. I know a lot, but I don't know how to fix that bugger. Here you see the super emblem in the back. That's actually a reverse camera. Rear speakers stolen from a 300 SL Gullwing. Front door speakers perforated flush behind the leather. Those are Focal audio speakers, JL audio amp, JL audio bass, and uh, Kenwood head unit. Uh, here you see the custom pedals, uh, power brake, that's a 60s Buick item. Um, and here's some glory shots of the leather all done. In the end, the leather that we chose for this interior is from a wonderful supplier that we work with a lot called Morin Giles. Um, what's cool about their stuff um, in a derelict is that it's it's all naturally processed Italian leather, so it is not UV stable. So quite purposefully to sort of add to the patina charm of a derelict, it will continue to fade and you can see natural imperfections in the hide, but uh, I don't know. To me it makes sense, to the client it makes sense, to some people it doesn't, in which case we'll use aircraft or UV stable automotive intended reconstituted hides, but they're just not as sexy uh, as this higher end stuff. So here we are down in the lovely LA River. It's amazing we can call that a river, gotta love LA. But it is a lovely place where uh, I like to do some good photography, or photography. I'm not very good, but I'm getting better. Especially with this video, I took a lot more time with this because I really wanted to communicate what goes into these projects in detail. Uh, unfortunately, no magazines uh, have opted to do any big features or videos on this particular car, and we're shipping it out here shortly. I'm kind of surprised I didn't get uh, more media love. We did get invited to show it at the Quail Show at Pebble Beach, which is a very prestigious show. We were honored and uh, the car received a lot of love. It was there in all its imperfect glory uh, amongst uh, shiny multi-million dollar rides. And uh, I think it uh, got a lot more smile and love. But uh, I think personally, this is one of my all time favorites. This uh, ZR Run, ZR1 motor blown intercool dry sump uh, is just a beast. Uh, this car has got about 660 horsepower, uh, right about maybe a little bit more on the torque, about 690 torque. We're running the 4L85E Supermatic Tranny. We're running Wildwood Discs, uh, six piston front, four piston rear. We're running a 20 to one rack and pinion from Flaming River. 
and Vintage Air uh, Gen 4 HVAC. Um, the HVAC vents are hidden underneath the dash, so nice and subtle, and I uh, uh, just didn't want to jump the shark with modern AC vents. The top, however, we did use uh, contemporary Mercedes uh, four ply hearts canvas with the uh, sound insulatory barrier. We left the top uh, with the glass window and with hydraulic controls. However, as I mentioned earlier, the power windows uh, and the power seat were converted to electric. That's the new Icon Derelict badge. There's a quick shot of the car at the Quail Show. It was also at the Streets of Carmel exhibit. And uh, we started our own little concour in Pebble Beach that we call, um, what the hell do we call it? Uh, Rock to Concour? Heck, I can't remember. But hell of a good time. We're going to do it again next year. So as you can tell, this is the rowdier version. Oh, that's just too much fun. Let's do it again. Oh, nothing but fun. This is the Second Street Tunnel. I'd love to share the audio, but my mic could not stand the challenge. But here you go. Yeah, let's do it again. was certainly exhilarating. Am I childish? Perhaps, but do I love what I do? Hell yeah. We had nothing but fun doing that. So now we're up on Mulholland Drive. Basically in this video I went through all my favorite places in LA and there you are with the top up. But I don't know. Let's do that tunnel one more time. made me giggle every single time. So more information on my company, feel free to call us 818-280-3333 or iconderelicts.com or icon4x4.com. Thank you so much for watching.